it's 100 pages long, which details uh, all the history and uh, uh, the contributions of so this is the uh, up to so what does it arise? It arises that there is a throughout the literature of Sierpinski's theorem, there is there are some peculiar things. First of all, there is a lot of duplications of this first thing. Second thing is that uh, there have been several mistakes or, or kind of mistakes of uh, unsubstantiated claims um, in, in these various papers. And uh, what is perhaps more a bit surprising, you know, says, is that uh, it seems that nowhere in the literature are these missteps explicitly noted and corrected. So that was uh, in 1901. So now, after 30 years, you know, the situation, I'm glad to report, it hasn't changed a bit. <laughs> the situation is still really much. Uh, um, Lots of papers scattered, and uh, it's very difficult to find. You know, uh, I mean, that there are, as we we'll, we'll see, several connections that have not been noted because it seems that everybody's kind of like uh, uh, contributing uh, to these various uh, uh, results, but with uh, little or no summary or background. So, <clears throat> What does Sierpinski's theorem say? Well, so there are actually two theorems by Sierpinski. The first one is uh, the theorem from 1919, so it's just over 100 years old. It says that CH can be, uh, is equivalent to say that the plane can be covered by two sets, P0 and one, such that every horizontal line has countable intersection with in zero, and every vertical line has countable intersection with in one. So it is as if, uh, it is as if, Take plane divided into two parts. And, uh, all these sections. Um, so I'm talking about vertical sections with respect to day one. All these guys are small, countable, and all these guys are small. And uh, so this is a first theorem. And then you know a few decades later. Uh, Sierpinski again proved a, a, another theorem. Uh, Note that in the first one we work with R two and the sections have to be countable. In the newer version we have to work with R three, but uh, the sections turn out to be fine. Uh, when I write the E zero down E n this thing, I mean. Uh, Standard basis of so I'm really you know sort of like this theorem is in a way uh, better. In fact, the Sierpinski claim that this is a, uh, a cardinality free characterization of CH because we are talking about finite intersecting countable, but we have to pay something. We have to go one dimension. Okay. Uh, so this is a characterization of CH, which is cardinality for success. Now, uh, the proof of these two theorems, Sierpinski and all the other theorems that is this kind of model according to a certain template. First, if you assume CH, you use an enumeration space in order of type omega one, and use this to construct the required sets. You know, you have to arrange the construction. So the, by the end, you know, you get the sets that you want. And, and so that gives you that from CH, you get these partitions. Oh yeah, okay, I, uh, I'll talk at times about partitions, times about coverings. Since we are talking about sections, you know, if you have a covering, you can, you know, cook out a partition and that does not change the size of the intersection. You, can, you get something even smaller, so. From finite, you still get finite. From countable, you still get countable. Right. So, on the other hand, so if you have a covering of partition as in the statement, then you suppose that the continuum is bigger than half one, and you construct at the end a point in a two or three or other spaces which lies outside this covering of this partition, and that's a contradiction. So, this is, this is the general template of this theorem. 
So there is a, these theorems have been improved. So 1951 seems to be an important year for these sort of results because there was this paper by Sierpinski, a paper by Kwiatkowski, and a paper by Sikorski. And on top of that, they all, they're all published on the same journal in the same issue. And so, you know, if you're interested, who proved what, when, before, and whatever, you read the same paper where everything is detailed. So I will not be super precise in terms of uh, who proved what, when. But. So Kurakovsky proved that uh, 2 to the LF0 is at most Aleph n if Rn plus 1 can be covered with n sets such that every line, you know, parallel to E sub i to the vector uh, Ei uh, has countable intersection with Ai. Okay, so this is the analog of Sierpinski old results. Um, you have countable in intersections and um, so if n is equal to one, you have that R2 can be covered with two sets of that. And uh, two to the zero is less ripple than of n, so same hypothesis, if and only if Rn plus two plus one, but the sections have to be finite. So this is a nice generalization of uh, uh, Sierpinski's theorem. In fact, actually, Sierpinski proved the first part for or whatever, but the, the general theorem is to Kuratowski because actually Kuratowski's theorem is a characterization of the alloys. And uh, when people, you know, if you look at this, you may think, oh, it's beautiful, but it's something that has to do with R. And the answer is not quite. I mean, it, it's just a general fact. So this is the main theorem by Kuratowski is that the size of X is of X and you understand is at most alpha, alpha plus n, if and only if there are uh, a0, an plus one sets which cover x to the n plus two, such that every line uh, parallel to e sub i, I, I think that you sort of figure out what I mean, e sub i is, you know, so we, have, we are looking at x to the n plus two, so it's a cube, and so we have various directions, and we, Get the idea what the line is. The path line is parallel to one of these directions. Intersects A sub i in something which has got size less than alpha. So this is true for any x. It's nothing to do with the real. So plug in the reals and you get the reals that are at most alpha n, opposite to zero, say, if and only if the intersection has got size less than alpha zero. So it's fine. It's a, this is a general. General fact. Okay. So when an alpha is equal to zero and n is equal to zero, we, you know, you get uh, x is countable. So you get surface is here, the first theorem is easy. But uh, this is a point. There is no uniform bound on the size of the intersection when uh, uh, when when you're we are dealing with intersection. With fine intersection. So you might say, uh huh, so CH means that you can partition R3 into three pieces such that you have all the finite intersections, but maybe there is a bound, a uniform bound. No, because if you have a, 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 if you have a bound that uh, the size of X is actually uh, um, is, is, not, is not that large. So if there is a uniform bound, and um, so this is uh, it's an obvious thing proved by Sierpinski proved lots of uh, highly technical things and certain things that nowadays we consider to be obvious. Now, what is uh, so a line from the point of view of R two is a subspace is an affine subspace of. Uh, for dimension one, so it's a hyperplane. And Sierpinski actually proved that, again in 1951, the following theorem of hyperplanes. Again, I'm actually cheating here. He proved it, I think, only for n is equal to three, and then Kuratowski generalized it. But 
let's call it set pieces here and library. Uh, for every n bigger equal than uh, one, CH is the same thing as saying that R to the n can be covered with uh, n sets. And every hyperplane orthogonal to E sub i uh, uh, intersect AI in a countable set. Uh, okay. I think, yeah, there is a type of it. And for every n bigger or equal than two. Uh, I mean, R2, R3, R4. So, I mean, I looked at the slide several times, so these are all the mistakes that I wanted to spot. Okay, so in particular, CH, if and only if, R3 can be written as uh, the union of three sets, A0, A1, A2, such that every plane orthogonal to the x axis or x or c axis intersect the relevant set in a countable set. Okay, countable. Why we have countable and not finite? Because for R2, we have lines that have okay, countable intersections. So this is the this is the correct generalization. But it works for every for every exponent, for every size. So uh, a line has co-dimension two in R three. So. so is there a dynamical? Yes, and this was proved by Sikorsky, still in the same volume of fundamenta and the same issue and whatever. And he proved that uh, actually I think that again, so Sierpinski proved an instance of this uh, general field by Sikorsky. CH, if and only if R4 can be covered with uh, six sets, A uh, with indexes of set of IJ, with I less than J less than 4, such that every plane which is parallel to EI and EJ, so we choose kind of like a possible coordinate plane and then it translated. Well, it has to intersect the relevant set in a finite set. So this is the correct analog to Sierpinski 1951. So, and this thing of, I mean, I stated just for four, but it was like, that the generation can get a little bit hairy and we don't want to, to look at it. So this theorem, as I said, can be extended in more dimensions of the clusters. Now, is there a cardinality free characterization of CH in the plane? Um, the answer uh, was posed by, by, by Erdos and uh, by himself, but was answered just a few, few years later, like 10 years later or so. So we have the following theorem by um, Frederick Bagamil, who analyzes as much as a theorist. In the States and Rory Davies was an analyst slash set theorist in the UK. Um, Bagamil proved in 1958 that if the statement now holds, then CH holds. And Davies proved that if you have CH, then you get the statement false, namely. The plane R2 can be split into three sets, B0, B1, B2, such that every horizontal line intersects B0 in a finite set, every vertical line intersects B1 in a finite set, and every diagonal line is so pi over 4 intersects B2 in a finite set. So it just. Now, uh, are these angles relevant? And the answer is no. We could have chosen, chosen three directions, yeah, three distinct directions, and we could have put the same here. Uh, okay, so this was okay, the this is the album of Sapinski 1951 result in the plane. But uh, Davies in 1963 and Bagenu building on that in 68. Generalize this thing to the whole other you know, size of the continuum. Size of the continuum, less than alpha omega, of course. The continuum is at most alpha n plus k, if and only if there are 
if you're in for any choice of angles, uh, so I bound it to pi because otherwise, you know, you go the other side and you get, if you don't get anything new. If you can get angles theta zero, bigger even than zero, up to theta n plus one, give up to one and n plus two angles. And uh, you can find sets uh, easily on the n plus one covering the plane such that uh, if you take any line in direction theta i, B intersection Li has got size less than Aleph K. So, so who proved what? Uh, Davis proved this this result when K is equal to zero. Bagen generalized it for any okay. So here we have another. This is also an interesting characterization of the continuum being at most Aleph something. Um, so just note that when k is equal to zero, then this means that uh, b intersection i less than alpha k just means something is fine. But again, again, there is no uniform bound. Although they, you know, in order to prove that they had to kind of work. So a little intermezzo uh, curves in the plane. What is a curve? So, I mean, a, a geometer would probably cringe at this definition because curve should be continuous. Something. I mean, uh, I, I dislike this definition, but I think it's a, it's a reasonable compromise given the situation. And so, uh, so any graph of a function, although it's maybe kind of split and uh, I call it curve. On top of that, if if instead of taking uh, this thing here, you rotate it and take the axis like this, and anything like that is it's a curve. So um, and this line here is called axis. This is the axis. Okay. The curve or direction. The curve with direction theta. 0 and pi is a subset C of the plane that can be seen as the graph of a function by looking in direction theta. Another way to say it is that uh, every line in direction theta intersects C in exactly one point. Or you take the graph of a function and you rotate it some suitable angle. So the usual graph of a function is a curve with direction pi over C. So a curve doesn't determine a direction. There could be many theta. There could be many theta. Yes, yes. The curve does not determine a direction. If a vertical line uh, uh, intersects A uh, in a countable or even finite set, if every vertical line, then you know we can find countably many Fn's such that the union of the Fn's comes at A. Um, it's, you know, well, you might say, okay, what if we have a section which is empty? Okay, let's uh, let's pick a point there and let's force all the functions to go through that point. Yeah. So I'm saying that union of the n power. So, so a moment of reflection shows that uh, using Sierpinski's theorem of 1919, we can arrive at uh, the following CH, if and only if R2 can be written as. Um, the union of countably many curves with direction, uh, vertical direction, or horizontal direction. Direction uh, pi over 2 and each di is a curve with direction 0. Direction 0 means a curve, for example, if you take sine of x and you draw it like this, it's a curve. Now, um, so we can use R2 can be covered with Aleph not many curves using two directions. And obviously you can, and this can be tamped a little bit, and you can even say something like the following. You choose two distinct directions and you can cover the plane with countable many curves 
using this direction. Of course, you know, as in CH, okay? equivalent to CHs. Okay, thank you. So, Sierpinski's theorem on the hyperplanes can be restated as R to the n is the union of Aleph zero coordinate curves. Um, uh, I will not write it down the coordinate curve, but I think it's pretty really obvious what I mean. You choose one of the coordinate axes, and so you have F and many functions that describe a point floating in the axis. And since we have countably many, you know, these desired planes of sectioning, choosing not many points on the plane, well, you can just get this curves that go, these functions that go through these points and you will tell them. And uh, the Bagamil Davis theorem, uh, it, you can do the following by saying that uh, the continuum is at most Aleph n, even only if R2 can be covered in Aleph not curves using uh, n plus one, using n plus one dimension, not n plus one Because it's enough to have the intersection, the countable intersections to be constant. And uh, R2 can be covered with, uh, but uh, this is a really striking theorem of Ray Davis is that R you know, regardless of the size of the continuum, R2 can be covered with Aleph not many curves. But of course, you have to have an Aleph not many distinct directions. This is kind of. Uh, so, if we want to go one step further, what's an arc? It's, an arc is just the, a subset of a curve. So it's a curve, it's a function that's not everywhere defined. It's a partial function, a graphical partial function. And now with direction theta is a subset of a curve with obviously the same direction. No, it is just crazy. Jack Cedar proved that R2 is the union of R2. No, pairwise is joined, connected R's. Connected means that as subsets, uh, each of them is a partial function. So if, if you look at it as a, as a subset of R2, it's a connected subset. Uh, and so if you had, if you thought, okay, let me take the graph of a continuous function and I just make countably many holes there, then you get countably many parts. And to do that, if not, is uh, at most Aleph n, if I know if R2 is the union of and zero pairwise is joined, connected arcs with n plus one direction. So you can, it's, it's quite, uh, quite peculiar. Okay, so this is my small excursus on, on, on this topic. So I, I want to go back to one of these fields at some point. Everybody happy with this? Hope so. Now, to move fast forward in the uh, beginning of this century, um, Peter Kong has the, the, after the, the, that's what he writes in the paper, after reading a paper of people in combinatorial geometry, um, formulated the following concept. So this, in the paper he refers to, People ask, uh, is the plane union of three stars? What is a star? A star is a set of the plane which has got a center in, in any direction. The center, you see a segment. They don't say whether or not it's open or closed. Okay. Is, the, is the plane union of can, can you cover the plane with three stars? Um, and uh, Peter comments show that if you assume CH, then the answer is yes, because it proved a much better theorem, from this point of view. Uh, so, what is, what is a, so he defined this notion of cloud. A cloud with, a, with center C is a subset of the plane says that every line through C has finite intersection with C. 
Now, uh, the theorem that the, so the, sorry, you can also soup up the definition by talking about kappa for number. Kappa is a cardinal. I mentioned this in the sort of implicit. The center C is a subset of the L intersection C, a size less than kappa for every line for C. So, uh, so a cloud is just an L of zero. I want to have the size to be less than L of zero or omega cloud. Uh, a sigma cloud is just an omega one cloud. Let's call it sigma cloud. It's a little bit simpler. So is R2 the union of three clouds, three omega clouds? Well, if the plane is the union of three clouds, okay, this is a cloud, and the center, I look in this direction, finally the point, uh, I take the first point and the last point, and let me covered with an interval. The same is true maybe on the other side. Then if I can cover the plane with three clouds, I can cover the plane with three stars. So, but can we do this thing? Well, first of all, the center of the three clouds, uh, first thing, let's look at the definition. When I talk about uh, the center of the, star, of the cloud, the center need not to be unique. Fact number, one. Fact number two, more important, need not to be of the cloud. It's just a privileged point of view from which you can admire the cloud. Uh, two clouds cannot cover the plane. Uh, the problem is that you have the two centers, and look at the second. Finally, many points are covered by the first cloud, finally, many by the other cloud. And you still get two to the left, not many points which are not covered. So three clouds cannot cover the plane if their seven centers are all aligned. For the very same reason, okay? But what if they are not uh, uh, aligned? So even countably many sigma clouds with collinear centers, or even kappa clouds with kappa many, with kappa less than uh, aleph omega and say uh, uh, kappa less than two delta naught and two delta naught singular, you cannot do it. I mean, it, it, there is this obvious, very obvious thing. If they are collinear centers, then they have problems. But uh, uh, but there is this beautiful theorem by Comet and Schmerl. Two delta naught is at most aleph n. If and only if the plane can be covered by n plus two clouds whose centers are not all linear. So whose centers do not lie all on the same line. It's just not that one of these not business. Okay. Now, if you get this sense that this, this theorem has all the same flavor, you're absolutely right. And what amazed me is that uh, people didn't realize before. So, uh, Peter Comet proved, uh, introduced this notion in 2001 and proved that forward direction and also the reverse direction when n is equal to 1. So he proved that if you can cover a plane with three clouds, then you can, uh, then you get CH. Uh, he even added in a, um, added in proof in the paper, oh, by the way, I managed to prove that it's consistent that the plane cannot be covered. Uh, so I, I recently emailed him and he forgot how to prove it. He even forgot that he actually had proved it. He, he, he wrote at some point at least he thought that he was a bit this. Uh, Jack Schmel in 2003 proved the, the other direction and and uh, so Comius proved that from the bound of the continuum, then you get up to can be covered when the clouds can be kind of massaged to, to use sigma clouds, uh, always with the proviso that the centers are not linear. But of, and of course, from n plus two, you can drop one unit. You can, you can do with one less. 
And uh, yeah, and of course, you have to avoid the case n is equal to y. Uh, but they, it can also be extended to the following kind of uh, uh, slightly uh, less pleasant version. But is a uh, uh, what does it say? If you take the plane, you take away a line, and then you can cover uh, uh, the R two minus line with n plus two clouds with centers all on the same line. Uh, he didn't spell it, but uh, really, this proof can be adapted with very little effort. Um, with almost no So R is uh, less than R fn for some n, just in case we can cover n plus two clouds. So uh, if the plane can plane cannot be covered with finally many clouds or sigma clouds, then the size of the continuum is at least alpha omega, and therefore it is at least alpha omega plus one. Two dimensional cannot be alpha omega, or so, um, can it steal? So this is kind of like a neat way to kind of uh, uh, describe this. Uh, um, what about covering the plane with infinitely many clouds? Now, uh, I, I'm sorry for this definition, which is pretty loud. A pseudo circle. So, what, what is a circle? We know what it is. So, the center, and you know, you, you see all the points around you are some fixed distance. Now, if you give away the idea that the distance are fixed, then you get a pseudo circle. In any direction you look, when you when you when you're sitting in, uh, in the center, you see a point, but the point these points might be at different different distances. So, um, so really, you want every ray, not the not So, Tommy uh, actually in that paper put that R two is the union of counter by many. Uh, uh, this is a heterotic pseudo circle. This, there is no center. I mean, you can you can tamper it, and you can even say that given any line, you just get either a point on one side or a point on the other side. I forgot to write this one. I get the center circle, the pseudo circle. So this is the analog of Davis's theorem. In some sense, uh, not just in some sense. There is this theorem uh, that says that R2 is the union of alpha zero many curves. So there are two questions. Uh, are there direct implications within these state statements? Are any can be decomposed as in Sierpinski's Wartowski's theorem? R2 can be decomposed in many pieces as in Dagger Davies at this level. R2 can be covered with n clouds. Well, there is a silly answer. Yes, they are all equivalent. They are all equivalent to this. Okay, shifted by degrees. Should have written Rn plus two in order to match the exact calorimetric state. Okay, yes, they are all equivalent to to something, but uh, but there are simple simple geometric proofs that. Three implies two implies one, and um, and uh, so the the outcome is that more than half of the proofs in these papers they they could have been avoided, starting from Wagner's proof from nineteen fifty eight. Uh, I did look at it using you know first year linear algebra. It, you know would have been one line. And, uh, um, and this thing seems to have been uh, repeated over and over again. Um, then using this geometric transformation, one can get sharper and seemingly new equivalents to scale. So one can rephrase Serpice's classical theorem in a, a better way. 
And if part two can be covered with n class that belong to some point class gamma, then the same is true uh, of the Bagamil Davis and Sartisky decomposition. Now, so if we can if we can bound the complexity of the pieces of complexity of clouds, then we have a way of transforming clouds into Bagamil Davis partitions. And this complexity is preserved. This is the last point, it's really what interests me. Um, so the pieces in Sierpinski decomposition for RM are neither measurable nor have the, their, the property of their. So the least possible complexity is sigma and two. Yeah. If you want to <clears throat> check it, for example, look at the uh, uh, these are two case in the uh, set A and B. If all these sections are countable, then you integrate vertically and you get all these measures here, then you integrate the result and you get this one from so here and so on. For our three is just the same. Bold. Uh, so the, the least possible complexity is that I see is sigma one two. Because sigma one one and pi one one measure at the top of the bear and the tag. So what if the Sierpinski decomposition for our pieces are sigma one two? So so this is the uh, uh, result I talk about right? is that if Rn plus two can be written with n plus one can be decomposed in n plus one pieces according to Sierpinski. So a priori I should have the, the continuum is at most Aleph n, but actually I get Aleph two. And this is what I should have gotten Aleph one. In fact, uh, in fact, I don't even have to require that all of them are sigma one two. It's just enough to get the first uh, the first n. I mean, this is a technical thing. It's a technical thing, but it's a curious sociological uh, phenomenon. Uh, this was observed essentially by, um, by Turnpiece and Vice, who we will also talk about in a second. They show that uh, if you can cover the plane with three uh, three clouds and signal from two, then something happens. The real, every real is constructed. And they notice, oh, but we don't need to have three clouds all of them to be signal to it's just not that one of them or the other is to go through. But they didn't look at the CIPDC thing. I mean it seems that I mean once what happens all well, the other things we don't know what happens about it Darwin and Davis decomposition. Um but it's a general fact. Uh, okay so this is a technical question but that's what it's interesting. So by the geometric construction that I mentioned before, I get for three a similar statement for Bagamil Davis and for clouds. Okay, so if the plane can be covered with n plus two clouds, and these clouds are sigma one two, or even just the first um, n of them for sigma one two, then the continuum is at most. But it's something I really dislike. It's the power position step two here. Uh, and at the top of this. So, this project was uh, inspired and, uh, and really commissioned by the following theorem, which I think is one of the nicest. Uh, I, I find it extremely nice. It says that the following are equivalent every real is in L. Uh, there are a zero and one a two, which are sigma one two line space with no parameters, so it's no it's an explicit uh, sigma one two definition. Witnessing Sierpinski's theorem for three, and there are clouds c zero c one c two sigma one two covering the plane. What I was saying before is that uh, uh, Asger and Bill. Said, oh, it's just enough the C2 on the three C1, so the other guys can do whatever they want. But 
for some reason they didn't acknowledge that the same is true. But it's kind of curious. Uh, so how how does it go? So they 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 take the old proofs, you know, Sierpinski and Comet, and they use uh, a good, what is called a good sigma one and two, or order reals to construct these objects. And then in each case, they argue that the reals must be in L. But uh, also in that case, had they used the geometric transformation, they, were, they could have proved it for Sierpinski and then get for three per class. Okay. The bound LF2 is most likely due to mathematician itself, but the mathematics. I mean. So my conjecture is that uh, if Rn plus 2 can be decomposed of Sierpinski, uh, and the sets of sigma 1, 2 in some given parameter A, and R is in B, this is what I should have proved. But uh, this is not what I was able to prove. And, uh, uh, so, if I could extend a, something like a combinatorial result uh, that it makes the whole thing work from finite to omega, then I could also prove the following conjecture. Uh, remember that Davis showed that R2 can be covered with Aleph mountain curves. So if these curves are not bad from the top of, from the descriptive set theoretic point of view, if they are sigma one two, then the continuum is at most alpha two, and module of the first conjecture would be alpha one. So it's it's so it's all uh, it depends on there are certain bottlenecks, and fortunately there are some not independent. So let me mention a few open questions. And uh, uh, so let me see on the side there. Uh, so, okay, so we talk about the open questions and then like, if you want. Um, so, Jack Schmerl and uh, Miro de la Vega prove that uh, the continuum is at most of the n if and only if R2 can be covered with n plus 2 spreads. What is a spread? A spray with center C is a subset of R2 such that every circle center C, true circle, we all call it circle, uh, every circle centered in C intersect the set S in a finite set. So take any circle and you just see finally in the corner of S. But boy, this is strange. We have to have collinear centers here. In order to get an if and only if, because uh, because uh, Schmerl uh, extending previous work previous work of Galavega proved that R two can be covered with three sprays with non collinear centers. So first Galavega showed that if you take three centers that are in equilateral triangles and using some you know quite a computer lots of polynomials and, and, and a lot of pretty deep mathematics. He showed that if you you know if you choose the, the, the triangle well, then you can have we, you can construct by like, its final induction argument, you can construct three sprays that count. And Schmerl said, well, you don't have to take an equilateral triangle, you can take any real triangle. But if the triangle gets deformed up to a three points that Align, then there is no way you can do it by hand because then you get another, yet another appearance. Smash. So, so my no, no, this is not a conjecture, is it? So, it should be a, a question. It's not a conjecture. Uh, I don't have any conjecture for this question. Is there a geometric argument that turns a covering the sprays to a certain the composition? So I can do it for clouds and these kind of things, but these objects, you know, you have quadratic equations and I'm going to get that lost here. Uh, uh, okay, so, okay, this is, this is the, the part where I, uh, um, so I sort of, 
uh, I managed to state the main result that I, I would like to talk about. But uh, um, I don't know, um, Vincenzo, what do you suggest? Should we take a break now or, 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 or maybe? Yeah, I mean, you started 10 minutes later, so. Okay. And from now in 10 minutes, uh, uh, as you wish, what, what is the best? Okay, may, maybe this is a good time where we can take a break, maybe even five minutes and then we can check it out. Okay, let's take a break of 10 minutes. Okay, so here we go. So, so uh, in order to state in a compact way what I want to say, I I have to introduce some uh, rather annoying notation, I would say. Uh, so this uh, this thing is stands for Sierpinski. Sierpinski sub k and plus two means that there are n plus two sets covering R n plus two such that the sections have size less than R sub k. So when k is equal to zero, this means that the intersections are finite. Uh, and in k is equal to one means the intersection is count. Uh, so Sierpinski's theorem say that CH if and only if Sierpinski sub one out of intersection in dimension two, or Sierpinski be finite intersection in dimension three. And the general statement is, for example, general theorem by Tvartovsky Sierpinski is, is rendered easy. This is just nothing new, it's just uh, the same notation, then the bug in Davis decomposition. Well, let me state it like this. There are uh, angles and there are uh, sets covering R2 such that this, uh, the intersections have size less than K for every line in the direction of theta i. So that, uh, okay, so here, see, I said there are angles. And if, if I put a plus, it means that for any choice of angles, that are sets of And if you think about it, it's not completely obvious that you can do it. Uh, uh, you can move from some certain angles to uh, any choice of angles. But, uh, so the plus, of course, implies the case without plus. <laughs> any choice of angles, then you choose some of those. Um, so, Bagrinal Davies, uh, you know, says that continuum is at most alpha n plus k, if and only if the plane can be covered with n plus two sets according to some direction or for any choice of directions you can do this. So, okay, of course, you have an impl cheap implication in this way. Uh, the other one, Requires. So the best thing is to show that this one implies this, this one implies this, this is obvious, and then show that if you have some uh, directions such that, then you get, you, you do a, a, a round robin style chain of equations. So this is uh, for clouds, clouds uh, sub KN, it says there are distinct non collinear centers and uh, Aleph K clouds, C, V, O, C, and minus one, centered around uh, CI, centered around point of CI uh, that cover R2. And, uh, you know, if you put a plus, you, you just have for all non collinear centers you have what the clouds is about. And Komi uh, you know, Look at this is equal to this, even only if I forgot to write it, even only if it's a plus. Yeah, you, can, you can choose. You choose the sentence that you want, and that's fine. Um, so, sorry for one more thing is that if you if you give me a line, uh, this one says that the uh, centers on this line can be clouds or the properties. Nature, which cover um, 
up to nine as well. Now, um, this is, you know, the plus version is defined accordingly, but you choose distinct centers of the mind, not just there are some, some end, end points. So, using some basic geometric construction, one can show that, you know, uh, I'll, I'll show how you can show the fall. Then if you can cover the plane uh, with N sets, then you can cover Rn with sets, preserving the size of the intersection. And this thing is actually so efficient that, so, you know, for example, you can ask, can I cover the, the, the plane with three clouds? So yes, with CH, but can you assume that the clouds have the following property, that in any direction I see, I see finally many points and there is a uniform bound. Yeah. So that the first cloud in any point you, in, in any direction you, you see, you just see a hundred. The second cloud is one million points, the third one one billion. And the answer is no, because there will be a uniform bound. And this uniform bound will tell you that you can cover R to the N with you know, you can, you could get a, a easy decomposition with a uniform bound, and that's known since 1951, even before, that cannot be done. But, you know, in order, if you want to do it directly, it's, it's a bit of a mess, say, if you want to prove directly that you can. Um, this version that uh, officially was never really stated by anyone, so, no, but uh, it, I'm absolutely positive that uh, uh, Peter Comet could have, could have stated in the group. He never thought of that. Um, the clouds K um, with respect to a line is the same with the choice, whichever choose you, whichever center you want, is actually equivalent to the Bagenil Davis decomposition. And it's, uh, it's just enough to take. Uh, the transformation of the projected plane. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it centers on this line and you send it to the line to infinity. Work. <laughs> and uh, this is, uh, you know, plane, uh, you know, this is the Bagge Mill Davis decomposition that you can choose certain uh, direction or for any direction you choose, it works. And finally, um, from the fact that you can cover a plane with uh, n many clouds, you can get directly the you can cover uh, part of the n using Alasek Pinsky. So before I was a little bit cavalier, what I said, covering with clouds and flies, bugging and things is not exactly. <laughs> Covering with clouds are excluding one bar. And you say, oh, well, but maybe the proof for relative to a line or without a line having no non collinear center is you know, requires some further ideas. Uh, no, if you look at the proof, it's, it's a very, very minuscule kind of uh, variation. So, so what can we prove? We can prove the following, that uh, from this hypothesis, one could prove this, uh, then you get that, for any choice of centers, you can do it for some choice of centers. And uh, this was done by Sierpinski and these other fellows. So all the other kind of equivalences uh, are, are kind of like, uh, Obtain. I write plus or minus to say you can get a plus or not. So it's it's all this, you know, sort of like that. So about half of the proofs in, in most of the papers, Hagen, Mill, Davies, and, and even uh, Comet and, and Torquist, you know, in, well, maybe not half, but well, in some cases, the whole paper, in some case, in some other cases, a third of the papers, or a third of the proofs can be avoided. Um, and uh, in particular, if the clouds or the sets in the Bargain and Davis composition are sigma one end, then the same is true for the pieces of Sierpinski decomposition. So, it, you know, this is, this is what we 
motivated me. And I don't have other ways to call it. The embarrassingly simple fact. Uh, uh, so if we have a function from V to W, a linear map in vector spaces or dimension at least two, and D is in the range, and A is the pre-image, take a line, by a line I always mean an affine line in the first vector space such that the direction of the line is not in the kernel of this. And yeah, let's say something really trivial that you take the point of his image f of l, and uh, that's also an affine line w with direction f of v, and f is a bijection between the line in v intersection, the pre image of v, and the image of the line intersection v. I mean, this is. Uh, Yes, it's embarrassing, it's simple. And uh, so, so if you choose, you know, a bunch of vectors, and I prefer to think about vectors now, but, and, and uh, sets that witness the bug again with Davis decomposition, then you take any linear map that maps EI to UI, and uh, uh, take the pre image, then Yes, you have that uh, this guy's weakness. So we'll see. In, uh, as I told you, this is a, I mean, uh, in the paper, I have actually like the other things. So they're not that all like this, but this is really kind of embarrassing. In other words, any bug in your day is the composition of R2 in, of, of size of, with, with n many pieces. You know, you also the surface is a composition of Rn. So, so we get a corollary. Uh, Mazurkiewicz in 1936 proved that R2 cannot be covered with finitely many curves. Curves in our definition. So finally many curves and got finally many directions. So if you could, could do this thing. Uh, you could pull it back to an end, and uh, you would get uh, the composition such that any any kind of uh, uh, line parallel to one of the basic uh, directions we have find actually intersection of size one, and uh, you would have the composition of size uh, So this is a this theorem has been known for a long, long time. So uh, here I put some, some hyperlink. If you don't remember Davies' theorem on covering up two with polynomial curves, you can get it. Everybody happy with this? So. By the embarrassingly simple fact, this implies a theorem of Bagamir in 1985. Take the vector space over the real of dimension mega. So this is part of X, the space of all polynomials, which uh, I tend to think of the space of all final sequences. The, the, the direct sum of countermeaning copies of R. R to the less than omega can be covered by countable and countably many hypersurfaces, A sub N, because in each one of the direction you put you send that onto one of the various um, various um, directions of the curves that cover the plane, you pull back this thing and, and you get hypersurfaces. And the, what's a hypersurface? You choose one of the basic directions and you take off that one and you look at the Hyperplane still of dimension omega, and you have a map from that hyperplane into the direction of the hypersurface. Um, 
So L intersection AN is a singleton for each N in omega and for each line, uh, for each line L parallel to E sub N. Equivalently, uh, A sub N is a hypersurface with is uh, the main this hypersurface. Now, uh, same argument with some minor thing works also for R to the N instead of the less than the So, I mean, why do you write there of R to the N? Well, because when you want to talk about sigma one two, or whatever, you might want to a polished space, and R to the less than omega is not a polished space. At least, uh, I mean, it's it's much better to work with this one. So, yeah, uh, from the descriptive theoretic point of view, uh, and the Bagamil Bagamil's proof actually says, ah, what do you have to do? You have to take Davis proofs and modify it as follows. But he doesn't realize that actually. Yes. Complementary. So uh, a bit of projected geometry. I hope I don't. There's a algebraic geometer here in the audience. Hope I don't say too many stupid things. But uh, um, uh, so recall that a cloud with center C and it's it's a subset of R two meeting every line through the center through this this, this point of the center in a finite. And the two degree of not is up to alpha n, even only if you can cover the plane with n plus two clouds with non collinear centers. So, this is so. Comia's proof really can be modified that, so that uh, R2 minus L is the union of n plus two clouds with centers on L. It's really, really the same thing. So, we get the following R equivalent. Uh, this and R minus two is the union of n plus two clouds with yeah, and L, and also with n plus one sigma clouds is, are clouds which uh, you have a count. You see countable many points. You are a little bit more generous. So this is the analog of the old theorem of surface from nineteen nineteen uh, section, and all the other things that uh, Magnil and Davis did. Uh, so, how do you prove it? Uh, well, it's enough to prove that two, if and only if, okay, two is, uh, two is this one, you know, you can cover with n plus two clouds with cyber So, the two implies that you have a bargaining days decomposition with n plus two cases, because then you can just look at the paper by bargaining days and you don't have to do anything. And that three is equivalent to the other paper by Davis, actually by Davis in this case, by Bagamil. But um, take a map from P2 to P2. P2 is the projective plane, the homography of coordinations, projective map exchanging the line L with the line at infinity. Then the clouds C0, Cn plus 1 are mapped onto some sets B0, Bn plus 1 that cover R2 minus L, and their centers are sent to points at infinity, which I call them directions theta 0, theta n plus 1. Now, uh, what's the point of being in, in the, of looking at the clouds? Cloud C0 is that if I sit in the center, in each direction I look, uh, I will just see finally many points. Okay, C0 is transformed into a set B0. And uh, so if I am at a point of infinity, whenever I look down, I just see finally many points of B0. So this is just the value of the zero. Okay, I'm sweeping a little bit. Because you know, I have covered plane minus one. 
So you send this line to the line of infinity, and the line in infinity is sent somewhere else. Uh, it just you can arrange to land again at the line L. And so we get a, a weakly form of weak form of plugging the Davis figure. The B sub i's are not really covering all of the plane. All of the plane minus the line, minus maybe that specific line. Not bad. Don't worry. Because it's, you know, choose an index i0 such that theta i0 is not the slope of this line. And obviously, it must be one. And, and just color that line, you know, but so replace bi0 with bi0 union that line. You just, you know, put a single color and you obtain a set as in Davis here. So modulo some minor things. So if the CI is at complexity sigma 1n, if the BI is at complexity sigma 1n, and then you add a, a closed set and that doesn't change the complexity of the sigma elements. Conversely, any B0, Bn plus 1 angles, theta 0, theta n, you do the same thing size out and you get common class. So, so these, these things are, these two theorems have the same theorem. The case with sigma clouds is the same. So the, this is, the two theorems are really the same theorem. Okay, but uh, it's true that I, I changed a bit because, you know, I am trying to cover the plane minus a little bit something. So if you work with non-collinear centers, how do you, how do you handle the whole thing? So without loss of generality, you can assume that CI is not C, you know, the, the center is not, so it's not the CI. And, uh, um, and then you can take the cylinder. So this is the plane. So you have uh, the center C0 and all out here with the plane. Okay, so then you take the cylinder this way. Okay. And then here you have uh, C1 and cloud. And um, probably this cloud will pass through this point. Um, so maybe I should have changed color. So you do the same thing and get better. And uh, it's important that you do this thing because uh, otherwise uh, what you get would not be a three-dimensional cloud. What's a three-dimensional cloud? Well, you sit in the center and, and rather than looking in the plane, which direction you are also allowed to look up and down. Now, if a center belongs to the cloud, then you get continue many points there, and that's not good. But you know, they just create center cloud. Okay. So by doing this, using a suitable collination, the three clouds are transformed into three sets: a zero, a one, and two, whose union power are three minus a plane, which is being infinity for some plane B. So it's not hard to see that these sets can be, I mean, the sets A0, A1, A2 can be souped up uh, so that it can also go this plane P so that they satisfy Scarapinsky's theorem. So it's really easy. I mean, this is not my proof. It's actually Schmel proof, but actually Schmel proof over the answer. But it's essentially his proof. And it's much easier than Collins and Jim's proof. You have to work with Archangel and lots of three. So if R2 can be covered with three clouds, then CH. Uh, if R2 can be covered with three sigma clouds, then uh, Tommy did not define sigma clouds, but uh, it follows from this argument when we get to the units of next order two. If R2 is covered with uh, finally many clouds or sigma clouds, you have to use uh, you have to use P sub n and protected space rather than two and, and that's why you get our continuum. So it's the same thing. 
Therefore, three clouds, uh, the four clouds covering the, the plane yields Sierpinski covering of the plane. And so these were the original proofs, but, uh, uh, but you can actually factor out things elsewhere. Let's say quite a little work. And, and you can preserve the complexity, which is the most important. As before, you cannot put uniform bound and size of the intersection between the line and the cloud and whatever. And, uh, and now, now there is a question. So the results in the plane seem to, you know, you know they imply that this is still a program, but the, the converse pattern, I mean, not, not the design, because you have this subjective map, and if you have sets in R3 and you smash them in R2, you get a mess. You don't, you don't get anything. So it seems like a prove it in R2 is better than proving it. Get something strong. And this is uh, see this vague uh, feeling can be translated in the following uh, question. Work in ZF, so no action of choice, and assume uh, Serpinski's theorem for dimension three. Can you also assume that there is no bargaining link to composition? I mean, of course, if you have the action of choice, they are equivalent. Both of them are equivalent to the continuing hypothesis, but if you don't, if you cannot model well for the reals, so this is a little bit distressing because I mean, I, I would like to look at one of the standard models like uh, using AD, but AD implies every set is not measurable, and so this is a question. Uh, but, uh, and so this is a little Thing and then I'd like to talk about challenging questions. Um, variation on Sarpinski's theorem. So let a row be a rotation of two pi over three along the axis diagonal. So theorem that you get for free essentially, C uh, CH implies, in fact, it's equivalent to the existence of the Sarpinski decomposition. Where the pieces are cylinders along a certain direction. So there is a single vector, which is not zero, one, two, obviously, it has to be. Actually, it can be really the vector one of one. So that these sets are cylinders. So you have a plane, x plus y plus z equal to one, you draw three funky sets there. Going to bargaining days, and you know, you simplify it and uh, gives you a bargain, a, a statistic a composition. I mean, it's, uh, I've, I've looked carefully, but nowhere in the status. Moreover, the AIs can be taken to be concrete. Like, well, <laughs> can have this rotation that takes A0 to A1, A1 to A2, A2 to A0. So you can get further. Um, seeing some of them in short of time, we'll skip all this. And, you know, so the, the, the first theorem is uh, thanks to the embarrassingly simple fact. Using projective transformation, then you get the CH implies and equivalent to the existence of uh, Sierpinski decomposition of the space such that. The pieces are cones with the same vertex, and the vertex actually we can assume is the origin. Uh, and moreover, they can be taken to be congruent by the same rotation. So this is sort of like a, a bit surprising. So there are some other equivalents, you know, sort of recall that you have this Sierpinski hyperplane theorem that you can take a three and take any plane, uh, then you get counter intersection. So for L a line, uh, let's look at the phi of L, the, the set of all the planes that go through L, the pencil of the planes in three, that this way, then uh, theorem, uh, if P is a plane of R3, 
and uh, you get three parallels and parallels, right? No, I, I wrote non parallel, but I mean parallels and parallels. Right? Uh, then, um, actually, probably I should have written it. So, non incident without the point. Then, um, then CH, if and only if take R3, throw away the plane, you can cover the rest with, uh, uh, with uh, three sets such that uh, for any plane H uh, uh, through uh, LI, so for any H that is inside here, uh, H intersection AI is of some and say, well, this is not particularly elegant, but why should it be true? Well, because uh, we use this projective transformation, and uh, uh, this really, uh, uh, this is what happens if you take the hyperplane theorem, and you look at the point series of reactions, and these three points of infinity go Give you essentially it will determine your three lines and uh, it's 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 really applying this kind of machinery that was set up by um, Schmidt. So you can also do other things with this geometric construction by the duality that um, projective duality is a point to hyperplane. One can dualize a lot of results. For example, if you take your case theorem for 1919, uh, the, the theorem obtained uh, by dualizing it, theorem star, is a case if and if there are a zero and one partitioning the set of all lines of the plane that do not pass through the origin. That says you look at all lines in L0 that uh, uh, um, so, so choose, choose the next difference in zero. Let's look at all the lines in L0 such that uh, uh, they pass through this. This has to be countable. And I mean, admittedly, these are a little bit contrived statements. You, you do this thing by taking the previous statement in the file. Uh, I, uh, I don't, I mean, I sat down and started dualizing everything to see if there was something. Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything particularly interesting, uh, but uh, uh, kind of, it's interesting to know that, you know, there is a way to kind of construct new equivalence to CH. But uh, there is one more uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, let's look at script L, the set of all lines for R, script L and the set of all lines for R N. So this theorem is uh, a theorem due to Ergosh, Jackson, and Baldin, and um, and really builds on previous work by Ergosh in four, M is equal to two and K is equal to one, David, K is equal to zero and M is equal to M is arbitrary, and say that this, if and only you get this bound on a continuum just in case, you can partition uh, L sub N, L super N, in uh, n plus two points, such that you get such that you get this. Given any line in L sub i, L intersection a i is of size of most of k. So this is a, a different flavor because before we were looking at lines which are parallel to the left, and of course, you know, the line is parallel to zero is not going to be parallel to one. Uh, uh, zero to be all one. Uh, so I, I was getting n plus one, maybe ten by the But 
Uh, here I'm talking about, uh, I'm taking really general partitions with no rhyme of reason. There is no geometric kind of a priori subject. And you still get some boundary continuum. Uh, so for the forward direction, we only need to assume that these guys are disjoint. And uh, again, this, uh, this result that, uh, you know, in the specific case was already known in 1962. This can be given a, a simple proof of Comian's theorem. So, uh, uh, if zero is, um, if two zero zero is lost at the time, then R2 is by n plus two times. So, we would like to do that. The output is actually quite simple. So, uh, other questions? Uh, yeah. oh, sorry, since uh, you interrupted, I'm hearing a lot of clicking noises. Uh, yeah, it's we, we, weird. Uh, we, 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 so we, 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 Um, I didn't, I didn't, yeah, okay. Like, yeah, it seems that there is still... Hmm, strange. Uh, I tried to kind of uh, get rid of this uh, noise. It seems that it's, maybe it's our system. I don't know. Um, my, my audio has been, you know, so I don't think it's our... Anyway, let me go on. Um, so, assuming this uh, result by an uh, Andrew Jackson model, then we uh, we can do the um, But so here are three lines uh, given by C zero, C one, C two. Uh, so we have C one, C two, C two, C two, C two, C one. Uh, let T be the set given on these three lines, uh, and let L0 be all lines that, that uh, go through the point zero and that are not uh, uh, either this one or that one. Similarly, L1 is the set of all lines of G1 and X1, and, and so on. Now, this set of terrors is joined. And um, so by CH, there are uh, A0, A1, A2 covering R2 such that every L in LI intersects AI in a finite set. This is by this theorem by Erdos and, and uh, Jackson and Moldy. Huh. So C0 is, you know, you take A0 and you throw away this kind of Lines. Plus, you add this line. I C1, C2. Um, C1 is the other one, right? and C2 is the other one. Now, a moment of reflection shows that these are two lines. Yeah, because look at C2. You know, here I'm C2. Uh, if, uh, you know, if I take any line here, I intersect this point here in. One point. Plus, that would be a second. So we get the finite and intersection from each one. And so, yes, we get a kind of, we, we got a cloud. And uh, therefore, you can prove Comet's proof by using an explosion from 1969. And you can see the very advantage. All the, these are clouds centered and so in the I'm left. I'm, I'd like to give some ideas of the main results. So, as I said, this work is split into two parts. One is geometric, and the other is more combinatorial. 
So these are like two theorems, which is really just one thing. Like symmetric arguments when uh, R2 can be covered by finding many regions according to specific angles or finding many signal targets. If these regions are signal one, two, then we get. So, what are the ingredients of the proof uh, of the theorems? We have the notion of block, uh, which is a block of independent constructivity degrees. So, I'll briefly talk about that. The existence of a zero AM plus one sigma one two, a sigma one two, witnessing Sierpinski implies that there are no blocks of length M plus one. And then there is a combinatorial argument guaranteeing that blocks of arbitrary finite length exist if the continuous is at least half of A. And this is the really annoying thing because like, in some sense, uh, alpha 3 is too much. That's what I so let me just briefly say something about the constructibility degrees. And the constructibility order is the quasi order uh, um, power sheet of omega defined. A is before C if A belongs to L of B. Given L of A is included in L of B. Then you get uh, the constructivity equivalence. A is constructively equal to C, just in case L of A is equal to L of C. And uh, you got the constructivity out of the mega modular constructivity uh, equivalence. So this is an upper semi lattice, the soup of class of X, class uh, of Y, is X plus Y, you get the double table of X and Y. And uh, given any X, there are just uh, at most LF1 main length subsection. And the minimum of this is obviously the of the okay. uh, It's not a, a lower semi lattice. So, if V is equal to L, then V C is a signal. It's just, it's just one thing that we do. Uh, DC can be a linear order of length 2 if force over L and the successful order of two. DC can be a linear order of length of meter 1 because, uh, unfortunately, we have a natural process. Work, prove that this work in And in particular, if Uri proved this result, he should have just been honest. I would have been exactly. <laughs> but that's, uh, that's life. We proved that DC can have coffee on the other. But what I understand from the paper, you can get uh, the universe can be L of a sequence of length of the two. And all initial segments, you know, satisfy CH, but at the end, you don't have CH, you have the continuous work here, and you have this long chain of constructive degrees, constructibility degrees, sorry. And this is, spoils my plan of proving the theorem with RF1 instead of RF2. But not all is lost. Not all is lost. I think that there might be a way around it. So far, I haven't been able to pursue this. Thing. Now, if there is a coin real of force with uh, coin forcing, or if there is a measurable cardinal, then this is the U that I chain. Lots of anti chains, and I would be very, very happy if, uh, uh, if I could get that because you know, I could prove those theorems. Unfortunately, I could prove also with my hypothesis zero is equal to one. And then, uh, I, I get to this point. We cannot assume to have. So suppose a zero a n plus one or sigma one two and witness this is a basic property. So fix a parameter is a sigma one two that parameter. So I have a reduction property and assume that the parameters join that one two. Okay. So this one two is uh, the theorem. By a theorem of uh, Yuda and Chella, there is a coin generic over L of A, if and only in every delta one set in A as the property of there, but 
But these guys cannot have the property of their, you know, this therapeutic decomposition, uh, just normally like measurable, they are never ugly, they are bad, although, you know, just geometrically not so bad. And therefore, he cannot have a coin real. This is the reason. Coin real is not a negative. Measurable cardinals, forget about that, because then you get sigma 1, 2, the back measure of you get the property of beta, and that's again, it's, it's sophisticated. So we have to do it in ZFC. So the A is a bias to not have the property of there, so we cannot assume large cardinal or the existence of the And so this is the key notion. So if Finite or omega sequence B sub i of reals of general of sets, then M sub B is the smallest inner model N containing M such that uh, as inside can be R. So, what is a block of length K about an inner model M? It's a sequence of real B sub i of K such that. So you have a sequence, take away one of those guys um, and uh, construct from all the others. And take the list in a model containing M and containing all the others. And then this sub i is not possible, cannot be obtained. It's some sort of algebraic independence. It's a notion of independence. You throw away one, and not only you cannot get it from an algebraic operation, but even from constructive laws. This is the and this is the, the, the basic idea. And uh, so I introduced this notation because it's a little bit convenient. So here is the, uh, this is one of the ingredients, the no blocks lemma. If you have a zero n plus one, the witness of Pinsky for n plus two and if this guy is not one, two, a, then there is no block of length n about L a. No, okay. And this is really kind of like a more sophisticated version of what Donkist uh, uh, and Weiss did, in some sense. I mean, the, <coughs> the rough idea with the poem is that. Uh, is as if we were trying to construct some sort of house and uh, we are trying to get L of the finest sequence of reals and um, it's, 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 it plays the same role as having a set of small It's as if the reals that belong to these uh, intermediate models are collections which are small from the point of view of the big universe, but I know. The, the crucial thing is that they have to be independent. And that's something that this is combining the rate. So let me tell you what the scheme of the proof is. And uh, so assume a zero a one in the farm delta one two of a and uh, a and witness uh, and witness uh, so Pinsky. So let's look at the constructible degrees. If the size are at one, then the reals are at one. And you get a pH. Good, well done. So if the constructible degrees are at two, well, uh, I don't know, but there is this, uh, uh, for me, unpleasant situation that it could be in something like other than small. And uh, I don't have a way to construct uh, each other that are not blocks. It's, uh, this is the bad case. This is the case that causes me to write out the uh, set of part of one proof. And if uh, the constructed below the degrees are at least out of three, then there is an anti chain of size out of three in the C. And, uh, but we see as an anti-chain of size R2, because we got one of size at least R3, and by the combinatorial theorem, show now, 
Then there is uh, there are blocks about L of A of any kind of A, and this contradicts with log of L. This is the and this is the anything else. So so a set of uh, reals B zero B n in general. It, it, the combinatorial theorem you know, works for any upper semi lattice. So B0 of the end in the upper semi lattice is said to be independent if Bi is not the supremum of the Bj with J dash and I. This is the abstract version of being a block. And so there is this lemma which is has nothing to do with Sierpinski or the capability, but it's what makes everything work. So suppose D is an upper semi lattice such that the set of predecessor of any point is this is size at most aleph one. Then every anti-chain of size aleph two contains an independent subset of any size, or any finite size. So this is what is used here. And no, okay, so I mean, my vague uh, feeling is that maybe in something like Abraham's model, one, one can distill what I want to think. There cannot be a self-inspired sort of composition for maybe for, for all of them. If one could prove that, I could say, uh, forget about this, you know, forget about that, you can find that, and I could get it. CH, which is what I should, should be able to, what I should prove. You know, I don't know if I'm able to prove. Um, okay. Uh, and and uh, state your questions and here. So the first question is assume that uh, the constructible degrees uh, of size B size 3. Can one prove that there is a law? Of length and length, uh, there is a block of length and length. So, can I can, can you show that if you have plenty of constructive degrees, then you have countably many reals such that huh, if you take one of them out of the question, then uh, constructing the least in the model of the others, you don't get real. We say, and it seems like a doable question. If the answer is yes, then one would add that if R2 uh, is covered by sigma 1, 2 curves, then because one can, you know, one can modify the other proofs in one of the And uh, why is, uh, is, I find this question, this question here, interesting because there is a vague analogy in zfc we know that there is a well ordering but if there is a sigma one two well ordering the reals then ch holds this is the theorem of Mansour. so maybe there is something similar there is a theorem in zfc uh, you can cover the plane with out of zero curves but if you impose some sort of, if you, this is the, 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 the mantra would be, you need a sigma in one statement and it's got a sigma on two witness, then maybe you can say something about the sign of the So uh, that would be nice. But uh, look, the, the, the constructive world degree is not a sigma upper semi lattice. What do you mean? You know, come on, I got counted for many reals. I can just start there. No, yes, you can do it, but that's not what you want because that construction depends on the order that you present the reals. If I give you, if you give you counted for many uh, constructible degrees, then you have to choose a representative, and maybe choosing them, you're actually encoding lots of stuff, and that's not something that you should do. So one has to work directly with uh, this thing, and uh, so I need some new ideas to prove. 
and uh, and uh, I think this is the uh, yes. This is, I think I'll stop here. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So, are there any questions? What? I don't know why you can't use this. What happened? Yeah, here's something, but there are no questions. No, maybe. I ask, do you know if that notion of independence is a real notion of independence in the sense of what is called Matroid theory? Uh, or, uh, 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 if, if, I, if I knew what Matroid theory is. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's just uh, an abstraction of what linear independence is. So it's really the, the, the real notion of independence. I mean, I, mean, is it, uh, I, I don't know. I, I came up with this. Uh, this definition just—it would be. Maybe, maybe, I mean, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe it's regressional. I don't know, but it would be yeah. nice. And then to look what kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this you can get. I've been kind of like playing with this thing. And, uh, because, because, so for example, uh, even this question. I mean, it means if you don't have finite car, I mean, if you have arbitrary large dimension, then you have one. I mean, maybe it's, there is a. Uh, there are really few easy axioms that you can, uh, I'm sure you can uh, answer the question easily. And uh, maybe so. If it is, uh, it would be nice. Then, if it isn't, uh, so if you want, we can, you know, yeah, we can even try. The axioms are just a bunch, like, other axioms. Of yeah, because this is a, it's really sort of like um, this combinatorial lemma is, uh, it's, it's a peculiar thing. Uh, uh, yes. Where the proof is a bit peculiar. No, I got some ideas. Maybe I'll try to get something a little bit better. But uh, um, everything was really tailored to get this thing with the constructible degrees because you know you 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 want you want to do this construction and you want to diagonalize you know, have these things which this Sierpinski covering and if the reals uh, there are too many reals you want to construct. Something in the cloud which avoids every problem. And so, uh, but you cannot say, well, you know, you take things of different cardinalities because at the end you would like to show the CH or, or any way that the continuum is, is, is not so large. And so, you say, ah, let's suppose that uh, uh, you take this, uh, this uh, element of this magic sequence, magic block. And uh, well, for any choice of things which are in this model, uh, you do something. And then you take away V0 and you put it in V1. And this thing has to be done independent one of the other. So, so I was forced to look at this sort of independence mm -hmm. by trying to make the. And then I say, good, yeah, but are these, do these blocks exist? You know, this, this, this sequence, finite sequence. And uh, even just to have a block of like three, uh, um, it's, uh, is, is, I mean, a block of length two is that length I chain because you take one, you get something and, and uh, a block of length three, it requires a little bit of work and, uh, and to show that such a thing exists. But you can show that there are for any, any... Yeah, yeah. And as long as you have an anti chain of size LF2, and why do you need LF2? Because you can mine that LF1 many predecessors. But if you are in any upper semi lattice with a, an anti chain of size LF2, inside there, for any n, you can find a something of like n. I don't even know if I could get a size of a mega. Although this thing would not be very useful for. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. Okay. I just want to say that I really enjoyed the, the talk and everything.
every single theorem for me is bizarre. Uh, like I really cannot grasp well, the shape of this. But I have no nice questions to ask. Are there any questions? No? Okay, then let's thank the speaker again. Mm. Mm.